Hey everyone, and thanks again for joining us here at the Foundry Church. My name is Justin Colleen, and I'm the worship director here. We are so glad that you're here to see all that God is doing in and through his church right now. If you're looking to stay more connected with us throughout the week, make sure you go and like our Facebook page. There you will find additional content as well as the teachings that you see here on our YouTube channel. And speaking of, if you haven't subscribed for that yet, make sure you do that right now while you're here. Uh, with that said, let's go to our summer series right now, Judah, the Kingdom Chronicles. My name's David. I was a shepherd boy, the youngest of seven. Yet the Lord, the God of Israel, chose me from my whole family to be king over Israel forever. He chose Judah as leader, and from the tribe of Judah, he chose my family. And from my father's sons, he was pleased to make me king over all Israel. declared to me through the prophet. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod wielded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. But my love will never be taken away from him. So now, I charge you in the sight of all Israel, and of the assembly of the Lord and in the hearing of our God. Be careful to follow all the commandments of the Lord your God, that you may possess this good land and pass it on as in inheritance to your descendants forever. And I instructed Solomon my son and pled to those who came after to acknowledge the God of your father and serve him with wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches every heart and understands every desire and every thought. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. And these are the sons of David, Rehoboam, Abijah, Asa, Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, Ahaziah, Athaliah, Joash, Amaziah, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, Manasseh, Amon, Josiah. And now, Lord God, keep forever the promise you have made concerning your servant and his house. Do as you promise so that your name will be great forever. I am King Uzziah, son of Amaziah, grandson of Joash. But I was nothing like them. I vowed not to repeat the mistakes that led to their demise. God rewarded me for my faithfulness. But I could do more. I could be more. I wasn't meant just to be king. I could be priest and king. Until I became nothing. Hidden away and my son as king. I am King Jotham, son of Uzziah. I don't have much to say about myself. I am the Lord's servant. God has been good and just to Judah. It is he 
The Lord we should speak of. It is the Lord who should be praised. Welcome to the Foundry. My name is Matt Kuman, and I am so excited to be with you guys today. Uh, last time I taught here, I wore long sleeves, so just a warning, the gun show is here today, so don't get too distracted by that. <laughs> See, over the last few weeks, we have been in a series about the kings of Judah, um, and we're going to dive a little bit deeper today and continue that and talk about King Uzziah and King Jotham. Um, and if you have been with us at all through this series, you can probably see a bit of a trend with some of the kings that we've been looking into. Uh, Eric talked a few weeks ago about amazing beginnings, and there have been a lot of amazing beginnings with the kings, and yet at the end there seems to be a bit of a fall. And today we're going to talk about King Uzziah, and especially his amazing beginning, but yet at the end we'll talk about his fall. But some of us right now are in a good season. Uh, we are loving life. We are having a good time. We're at a good job and enjoying it. Maybe our kids are well-behaved and are listening to everything we tell them. Finances aren't stressful. Life is just going good. And even if we are currently in that spot, some of us can probably think about a time that we were in a really good season. But the question is, what what happens when we get too used to those good times? What happens when we get used to living a good lifestyle and start to think that we personally have made those things happen? That we've climbed the corporate ladder, that we have trained our kids well enough to, to be in a good spot, that we have made sure our families are Facebook or Instagram worthy. We've created this facade. We stop relying on God because we know we're doing just fine on our own. We're above other people. We've got it figure out, figured out. Rules don't apply to us because we're doing so good. See, this morning we're going to look at the reign of King Uzziah and then King Jotham at the end. But first, I want to tell you a story. Anyone listen to country music? Yeah, yeah, a little bit of country. No booze, right? That's good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not counting yours. Well, this, this man isn't from the country music of today. This man was a long time ago, back in the olden days, when they still delivered mail on horseback. Um, anyone ever heard of the na uh, man named Willie Nelson? Ah, right? Some of you are really offended now because you grew up with him, right? Maybe horseback is a little farther back than when he was around. Anyway, Willie Nelson started his career in the 1970s, um, and he was a household name really quickly. He was one of the best-known singers and songwriters in Nashville. Um, and by the late 1980s, he became a very wealthy and well-known man in the industry. But by November of 1990, all of those things changed. The IRS did some digging and found that a lot of his income was hidden in some tax shelters. And evidently, that's a big no-no for the IRS, and they came after him a little bit. They, the federal agent seized uh, a lot of Nelson's properties. He had properties in six different states, and they seized all of those. They took all of his touring equipment, many of his assets, and even his gold and platinum records. Just imagine making a name for yourself, and then all of it being taken away just like that. The IRS estimated that Nelson had about $32 million in unpaid taxes. And after they took all of his assets and sold all of it, he still had about $16 million in debt to them. Talk about an oops moment, right? That's a, ooh, I shouldn't have done that. It got so bad that as he was trying to pay off that debt, he would say yes to any commercial that was asked of him, just to earn a little bit of extra money, and even commercials like this. Such a fantastic commercial, right? H&R literally 
mocked Willie Nelson's advice on taxes. And he had to kind of do the commercial because he was looking for any type of money to pay off that debt. His life went from someone who everyone was envious of to a life that no one wanted, right? Which is a very similar case for the story that we're going to be looking at today in King Uzziah. So if you could turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians, or Chronicles 26, we're going to start reading at verse 1. So if you have your Bibles, let's read about King Uzziah. It says this, Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in place of his father Amaziah. He was the one who rebuilt Elath and restored it to Judah after Amaziah rested with his ancestors. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 52 years. His mother's name was Jocalam. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Amaziah had done. He sought God during the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the fear of God. As long as he sought the Lord, God gave him success. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. It's so awesome to hear a king who did that. And it continues. He went to war against the Philistines and broke down the walls of Gath, Jebna, and Ashdod. He then rebuilt the towns near Ashdod and elsewhere in the Philistines. God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabs who lived in Gerbal and against the Mayunites. The Ammonites brought tribute to Uzziah and his fame spread as far as the border of Egypt because he had become very powerful. We can see Uzziah is doing something right. He was able to lead an army and conquered so many different areas. One thing to note about all these places is that all these places aren't just right around Judah. These places were all over and around all sides. The Philistines are to the west and the Mayunites are to the east and then Egypt is to the south. So when we're looking at that, they're they're literally expanding all of their territory and going in all directions. Uzziah's kingdom was truly growing. Let's continue at verse 9. Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, at the valley gate and at the angle of the wall, and he fortified them. He also built towers in the wilderness and dug many cisterns because he had much livestock in the foothills and in the plain. He had people working his fields and vineyards in the hills and in the fertile lands for he loved the soil. Uzziah had a well-trained army ready to go out by divisions according to their numbers as mustered by Jael, the secretary, and Masai, the officer under the direction of Hananiah, one of the royal officials. If you're looking for baby names, I would definitely suggest one of those. Verse 12, the total number of family leaders over the fighting men was 2,600. Under their command was an army of 307,500 men trained for war a powerful force to support the king against his enemies. Uzziah provided shields, spears, helmets, coats of arms, bows, and slingshots for the entire army. In Jerusalem, he made devices invented for the use on the towers and on the corner defenses so that soldiers could shoot arrows and hurl large stones from the walls. His fame spread far and wide, for he was greatly helped when he became powerful. You see, King Uzziah is quite an inventive man. And when we think, we, we think now that that's not all that uncommon, right? To be inventive, there's, there's new apps coming out on our phone every day. There's a whole show designed around helping people make their inventions become something that's actually a thing. They're putting money behind it, like Shark Tank, right? But this is not always the case in history. There were times in history where hundreds of years would go by and nothing too crazy would change. Let's take a step out of the story for a moment and look at the history of war. For all of human history, there, war has been primarily static. There hasn't been many changes throughout war. You could put an army from the 1500s where guys would be in knights and armor and have that kind of a, an outfit to them to an army from the Greeks in the first century. And those armies that are 1,500 years apart would almost be able to fight on equal territory. They, they'd have the same kind of war strategy. There wouldn't be any surprises to it. 
in 1,500 years, the evolution of war hasn't increased. A lot has changed, though, especially in the last 100 years for us. Think with me to Germany. In 1914, Germany was fighting in the lines of trenches, and they had, they had artillery and machine guns that would kind of back them up, right? That's 1914. But in 1942, just about 30 years later, they had tanks, they had more submarines and missiles. So this was a game changer. If you line that same country up against each other from 1914 and 1942, The 1914 wouldn't stand a chance. There was a revolution in technology that changed the game of the war in a short period. And those tanks and those other inventions were a game changer in that technology. The inventor of the tank, Lancelot de Mole, and if you have a name like that, you have to invent something cool, right? Lancelot. See, Lancelot changed the way war happened. At the time, it was something that was so hard to stop in the war field when a tank's going through. Lancelot changed the game. And from our story, Uzziah changed the game. Before King Uzziah, war was very static throughout most of the land. It didn't change. There weren't many advances around his time period. Picture this with me. Uzziah's opponents had men that were not well trained and were not they weren't given their supplies they weren't given their weapons to fight with so we can almost assume that most of these guys are getting whatever they can as a weapon maybe some of them are farmers maybe some of them grab something from around the house maybe it's an axe a shovel and you can imagine maybe there's some arguments about who gets the sharpest shovel going into battle right it's it's an you can imagine what that looks like And then Uzziah comes on the scene and changes the way the war happened. Uzziah was one of the first to have a well-trained army. He was one of the first to equip his men not only with, with weapons, but they also had armor and shields to protect themselves. They were really well protected. He was an inventor. You see, he had towers where people could shoot spears from. Right? We read that they're also throwing rocks from these towers. I'd hate to be the new guy on the job and have to be like, oh, you have to go bring the rocks up the towers, carrying these big rocks all the way up to the towers. You can imagine some of their duties. Just brutal. And yet, these towers, these inventions that King Uzziah came up with changed the game of war. Uzziah was a powerful man, and rightfully so. He changed the way the war happened. It only seems right for him to do what he wants, right? He's powerful. He has earned it. He has turned his country into something so much more and been victorious over and over again. You could say Uzziah is the man. He's got it all figured out. But here's where it changes a little bit. See, King Uzziah was not satisfied with just being a successful king and a great war hero. He wanted to be more. Let's continue reading that. Verse 16 says this, But after Uzziah became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord his God and entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Azariah the priest with 80 other courageous priests of the Lord followed him in. Uzziah crossed the line by burning incense. This may not make sense for us today, but at the time, it was a holy ritual that was only set aside for priests. It was strictly limited to the priests. In numerous places in Exodus and Numbers, the Bible explains how viol- violating the burning of incense would, is really a capital crime. And a capital crime is punishable by death which is why they said this in verse 18. They confronted King Uzziah and said, It is not right for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord. That is for the priests, the descendants of Aaron, who have been consecrated to burn incense. Leave the sanctuary, for you have been unfaithful. You will not be honored by the Lord God. Don't these priests understand what King Uzziah has done? Right? Don't they get that he is the most powerful man in most of the known world in all the Aryan nations? 
Don't they know who he is? 19 says, Uzziah, who had a censer in his hand, ready to burn incense, became angry. And if you don't know what a censer is, it was the way they burned incense. It was often had a few cables on it, and you would wave it around as the incense burned. So he had this in his hand as he was walking around. While he was raging at the priests, while he was raging at the priests in their presence before the incense altar in the Lord's temple, leprosy broke out on his forehead. When Azariah, the chief priest, and all the other priests looked at him, they saw that he had leprosy on his forehead, so they hurried him out. Indeed, he was eager to leave because the Lord had afflicted him. King Uzziah had leprosy until the day he died. He lived in a separate house, a leprous, and banned from the temple of the Lord. Jotham, his son, had charge of the palace and governed the people of the land. The other events of Uzziah's reign from beginning to end are recorded by the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos. Uzziah rested with his ancestors and was buried near them in a cemetery that belonged to the kings. For people said he had leprosy, and Jotham his son succeeded him as king. You see, Uzziah truly was a godly man for most of his life. But he let all of the good things that were happening in his life go to his head. Uzziah was leading armies that were so well organized and well prepared. And he invented so many great military things and people followed his lead. He had a lot of great things going on in his life and his fame spread because of that. He was famous and envied by many of the nation and kings next to them. But he stopped obeying the law. He stopped obeying God, and he started doing his own thing. He stopped trusting that God knew what was best for his life. We all know what Uzziah should have done, right? We know Uzziah, as he got, as he got reprimanded by the priests, oh, sorry, I shouldn't have been here. You're right. Um, I, I'm asking for forgiveness. Is there any way you can, you can uh, help me in this, right? What do I do next? And yet, That's not what happened. We see there is no mention of remorse in the fact after Uzziah has done this. We're told that Uzziah had leprosy all the rest of the days of his life, that he lived in a separate house, that he never entered the the land of the Lord or the house of the Lord again. We are not told that he ever even confessed to God that what he did was wrong. You see, we have seen with previous kings that they have done some awful things, right? We've learned that over this series that there are some awful things that our kings have done, and yet at the end of their reign, if they confess those things to the Lord and turn their life around, we realize God is an ever-forgiving God, right? God is abounding in love and always forgives. Remember the story of Willie Nelson? See, Willie's life was going really great. He's, he's almost the epitome of success. He had properties in six different states, right? Things were going well for him. And yet, he had a very different reaction when he screwed up. He didn't give up on what he believed in. It took a little bit and a few commercials to get him out of debt, but he continued to make music. He admitted to what he was doing wrong and paid back those taxes. See, there are a few options when we fail. We can either allow the failures to ruin our life or we can ask God and see what our next step is supposed to be in that failure and how can we work out of that. King Uzziah let the good things in his life go to his head and allowed himself to feel like he was above the word of God. And the worst part is he never even asked God for forgiveness from it. He allowed that situation to just ruin him. Maybe there are some of you today that are thinking, it's too late for me. That I, have, I may have begun well, I may have lived my life well, but I have committed too many sins as of late to actually make anything worth. I've finished poorly. I have so many sins that disqualify me from that forgiveness. And I would be failing you if I ever let you leave with that impression today. For in Christ, there always remains the opportunity to be forgiven and to finish well. Regardless of where you are in your life, 
I want you to understand that you are never too late to turn to Christ. And your sins do not unqualify you for the love that God has for your life. Christ has called sinners like us, like me and like you. Because we, we are going to have our ups and downs. There are going to be up moments in our life. There's going to be down moments in our life. Maybe you just graduated high school and are going off to college and you can just taste that freedom. You're so close. Or maybe you just had a baby and the child is sleeping through the night and you're loving spending time with your family, right? Or maybe you just, you're just about to retire and you're ready to be done with work. You're excited to spend time with family and golf and travel and life is looking up and up. If you're in one of these up moments, you're like King Uzziah at his best, Right? You have conquered the known world. You, you've, no, you, you've done what you've known, and you have people that probably envy you. But how can your story end differently than King Uzziah? How can we remember to God, praise God in those great times? Or maybe you're in one of those low times. You lost a job, and you're having a hard time figuring out what to do with your life. Your family life isn't good and you don't know how it's going to get any better. There's an addiction that might be holding you back in your life that you're struggling to let go of. You're in a down moment like King Uzziah was when he walked into the temple at the end of his life. So how can your story be different? How can we remember to lean on God in those moments? You see, the neat thing about King Uzziah's story is it doesn't end in sadness, right? There, it ends in hope. Because I don't know how many of you noticed, but at the end of the story, it says, it talks about mentioning he had a son, Jotham. Jotham who took the reign over the kingdom. Jotham's story takes place in the next chapter, in chapter 27. So let's jump there a minute. Jotham was 25 years old when he became king. He reigned in Jerusalem 16 years, and his mother's name was Jersha, daughter of Zodak. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Uzziah had done. But unlike him, he did not enter the temple of the Lord. The people, however, continued their corrupt practices. Jotham rebuilt the upper gate of the temple of the Lord and did extensive work on the wall at the hill of Opal. He built towns in the hill country of Judah and forts and towers in the wooded areas. Jotham waged war against the Ammonites and conquered them. That year, the Ammonites paid 100 talents of silver, 10,000 cores of wheat, and 10,000 cores of barley. The Ammonites brought him the same amount also in the second and third years. Jotham grew powerful because he walked steadfastly before the Lord his God. The other events in Jotham's reign included all his wars and all the other things he did are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. Jotham rested with his ancestor and was buried in the city of David, and Ahaz, his son, succeeded him as king. See, when he was at the beginning of his reign, when no one was following him, when they were rebelling against him and and worshiping false idols, he stayed faithful to God. And when he was at the top of his game, when at the top of his reign and was winning wars, he didn't let that part go to his head either. He continued to walk with God. How nice is it to see a king who started and finished well? You see, we don't find much on King Jotham. The verses we just read is really everything there is in the Bible about him. But I think it's such a beautiful story because it's a story of a man who followed God. How much should we long to have a story of faithful obedience to God? A short story of faithful obedience. He wasn't a huge deal in this world, but he was a huge deal to God. So how can your story be different from Uzziah and similar to Jotham? King Jotham, regardless of what was going on in his life, whether it was an up moment or a down moment, he was still obedient to God. He didn't allow the great things that were happening in his life, he didn't allow those bad things to happen in his life 
to take away from his consistent relationship with Christ, being obedient to Christ in everything he did. Maybe for you, this looks like reading the word or praying, or picking up a devotion guide on your way out, or having conversations with somebody about how God is doing some things in your life. I challenge you this week to think about that. Dive into one of those things. Create a daily rhythm and say, this week I'm going to focus on this particular thing more. Have someone hold you accountable to some of those things. You see, a consistent relationship with Christ not just a relationship on Sundays, has truly helped me realize that I can't do this on my own. That I need God's help in everything that I do. And I can never stop thinking about this thinking that I have it all figured out. Because it's then when we start the downfall. But I'm never too late for God's grace. And I hope you will join me in that journey. Because it's not about the fame. It's not about the length of your story. It's about faithful obedience. Will you pray with me? Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word and the stories and lessons that we can learn from King Uzziah and Jotham. As we have clearly seen the kingdoms rise and fall, and we understand that your throne is there regardless of what happens, that your name is unshaken, Regardless of the sins that we have committed or the good things that we have done, you are always there with open arms and forgiveness. Because in the end, the victory is yours. Thank you for that blessing, Father. Amen. Today we had a story of a person who was consumed with themselves and a person who was consumed with God. Uzziah's son, Jotham, saw all the things Uzziah was doing and decided to take a different path. One thing I've already grown to love about this church is that there's so many different ways that you can walk with God. I encourage you, whether you have walked with God all of your life or whether this is something that is brand new to you, to take the first step. Maybe for you that first step is grabbing a devotion booklet and diving into that a little bit this week. Or maybe God spoke to you today and you want some prayer. I ask that you reach out to us on Facebook and send us a message and we would love to connect with you and pray with you. So friends, let me leave leave you with this final blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Have a great week. Hey, thanks again for joining us for today's message. If you are looking for a way to prepare yourself for next week's message, make sure that you click the link below in the description right now, and that'll take you to our weekly devotion page. Weekly devotions are a very important part to our weekly rhythm here at the Foundry Church. We really hope that God spoke to you in a powerful way today, and we cannot wait to see you again next week.